Week 15 is here and is loaded with a ton of great sleeper picks and value plays here, especially in DFS. So let's go ahead and get into that right now. Starting at the quarterback position, we have two obvious plays. That's going to be Jalen Hurts and Justin Herbert. If you guys want the deeper analysis on that, make sure to check out the core plays video. But Mike White is going to be the one kind of sleeper pick quarterback that I like. Obviously, this is going to be very much matchup based and price point based. The issue with Mike White and that's what's going to make him more of a sleeper pick is going to be that rib injury. That could really hinder his performance. In fact, he could sit as well, but all it takes is one hit to really make him sit the rest of the game as well. So that is the worry, but I'll talk about the good stuff. 44 passing attempts last week, 57 passing attempts the previous week. They are throwing the football a lot. And tack on the fact that it's going to be super easy to stack the Jets as well. We look at Zonovan Knight, someone you could potentially look at, but Garrett Wilson, 6K, super cheap. He is a core play for me this week. But then you look at Elijah Moore. Elijah Moore could easily be a very strong price point play with Corey Davis having a concussion. Okay, Elijah Moore could see 80 to 90% of the snaps like you were seeing earlier on this season, like you saw last week. 10 targets, 12 DK points going against Detroit. Right. That's going to be highly appealing to me. He is someone that, especially in game stacks, is a value play that you want to be on. And then also Denzel Mims, probably going to play around 70% of the snaps as well. Uh, obviously, it's the same great matchup. So it's going to be pretty easy to stack the Jets. Uh, Mike White in GPP purposes, I think you want some pieces of him. Now, getting into the running back room, guys, the running back situation is basically all sleepers and values. Okay, Derrick Henry to me and also James Conner are going to be two players you want to go out of your way to play. Looking at the New England situation, we just got to wait and see what the injury news is. Like Reandre Stevenson, is he going to play? We don't know. But if he sets, Damian Harris would be great play if he's active. If he sets, then it's a guessing game between Kevin Harris and Strong. Okay. We don't know exactly what's going to happen there, but that is something we just got to wait and see on. From there, I do want to call out the Kansas City Chiefs running backs. We got Isaiah Pacheco and Jarek McKinnon. And the way I'm going to approach these two is the same way I approached Tony Pollard and Zeke last week. Okay. I want one of these two and basically all of my builds, or at least a majority of my builds. But I'm going to do like a, if the lineup includes Isaiah Pacheco, it doesn't include Jarek McKinnon. I'm going to run it back the same way. If the lineup includes Jarek McKinnon, I don't want Isaiah Pacheco, but I do want one of them because the chances of one of them going off against Houston is obviously there. And heck, Isaiah Pacheco has been extremely consistent, going to play about 50% of the snaps, but so is Jarek McKinnon. Jarek McKinnon going to play about 50% of the snaps. And we just saw them both get around 15 opportunities last week. And now you tack on the fact that it's a great matchup. Like, yes, we want a piece of this. One of these two could easily go off and break the slate like Jarek McKinnon did last week. I kind of mentioned Zonovan Knight. He is a guy that just has fresh legs and is looking good with those fresh legs late on in the season. Sure, the matchup with Detroit on paper isn't the best, but if they can get him a couple of receptions in the passing game, that would be huge, okay? Zonovan Knight, certainly someone you can look at in GPPs a little bit, you know, maybe 10%, because if he scores a touchdown, he can really go out and potentially break the slate. And then obviously on the flip side of that KC game, we have the Houston running backs, okay? And this should be a good spot for them because they'll probably get some work in the passing game. Dara Gumbawale, who was this leading snap getter last week, but then you also have Rex Burkett, who's more of the natural, I guess, replacement. Once again, we still have to wait and see on the news for this, but there's a good likelihood that one of these two really go off and you know, get three X. Heck, if one of them scores a touchdown, they could easily go out and break the slate. We don't know who that's going to be just yet. Obviously, as the week progresses, we'll be able to figure that out. But as it sits right now, I do think we are going to want to get one of Dari Gumbawale or Rex Burkhead and maybe about 25% of our builds because the game script should be there. Now, the biggest worry is that we don't know what the quarterback situation is going to be. It could be Jeff Driscoll, you know, doing quarterback and running the ball a lot. And I phrased it that way for a reason. He was listed as a tight end at the start of the season. I don't know if you guys remember preseason DFS. He was starting at quarterback and we got to play him at tight end. He was like 90% owned. And he was under owned on that slate. So uh, just something fun there. And then David Montgomery as well, just to call out, like he'll probably be under owned than he should be, more under owned than he should be. You know, probably going to be a guy that does get around 20 opportunities and probably around 75 to 90 percent of the snaps. OK, against Philly, not the best matchup. Sure. But could he go for 20 DK points? He certainly could. Like he has been impressive the last three weeks, especially without Khalil Herbert. So I feel like coming off of the bye, he's kind of the forgotten guy. And so I have 6.3, you know, more or less a shoulder shrug play, but it wouldn't be shocking to see him have a good week as well. And then factor in the Dallas running backs as well. Like you could certainly play one of them. Like that is the issue with this slate is that all the running backs are pretty much sleepers. OK, and I know that's not the best hard hitting analysis. 
it is what it is, guys. That is the slate. For receivers, though, yes, there. this is going to be fun. So let's start out with Jerry Judy. Jerry Judy, I think, is going to see a spike in his ownership more than he should be because, well, he's going to be most likely the only healthy body, okay? And he did have a good game last week. Three touchdowns, nine targets, uh, 33 DK points. Okay, at 6.1, he is pretty cheap, especially to a Cardinals defense that isn't the best. Yes, you can play him. Not someone I'm particularly going on my way to play, uh, but kind of a sleeper, but I also want to call out Brandon Johnson, who might just be the next man up. And at 3K, we could get a receiver number two, a guy that's most likely going to play 80% of the snaps because Court and Sutton might be out. Kendall Hinn probably out. It's going to be him and they might have to pass the ball a decent amount. Okay. So that would be a very interesting minimum price value play for you on the slate. And then Marquise Brown, certainly going to be a sleeper play. He was close to having a touchdown last week against New England, which is a tough pass defense. Okay. Not a terrible game. Eight targets still. You like that. 7.4 DK points obviously would have had a much better game had he caught that touchdown. He is at a very cheap price point, guys. He is playing a ton of snaps, and it just wouldn't be shocking to see him really go out and have a dominant game. Just playing so many snaps, getting so many targets, even if the matchup is tough, it's going to be tough for DeAndre Hopkins as well. Maybe Hopkins garners more of the defensive attention, which allows Marquise Brown to maybe get open for a touchdown like he did last week, and this week he just catches it. Wouldn't be shocking to see him get 20 DK points, and given the matchup, and given kind of the production last week, he's going to be more under owned than he should be, okay? Mike Williams is going to be a great GPP play. Chris Moore is uh, certainly been lighting it up, okay? 11 targets last week, 124 receiving yards, 25 DK points. In this matchup against Casey, once again, it should be a game script that favors the Texans, okay? At 4.0, he's certainly someone that could go out and have a great game. Could usually go out and play 90% of the snaps. Once again, if Nico Collins and also... Brandon Cooks are out, then Chris Moore is going to be someone you're looking at. If Nico Collins is active, he is still pretty cheap as well at 4.3. You know, he was the receiver number one prior to that and had been putting up some pretty productive games. So he is also someone I think we would be looking at on this slate. I want to talk about Westbrook. You know, he was someone that I really thought was going to be a strong value price point play last week. Only got a $100 bump. Yeah, sure. He had eight targets, only one touchdown, but still scored 11.3 DK points. I love the fact that one, he's on the field for 90% of the snaps. I love the fact that he is getting a decent amount of targets. He is, I still think, Ryan Tannehill's favorite passing weapon. So if we can get him at that price point, that's going to be appealing to me. All right, we got to monitor the Carolina Panthers situation as well. DJ Moore currently questionable. I do expect him to play because the Panthers, I believe they control their own fate because they play the Bucks. So obviously they're going to try to make the playoffs, I would assume. And so I, I would kind of expect DJ Moore to push through an injury. But if he sits, Marshall would definitely be someone I'm looking at. You would think he would see an increase in targets. Okay, if he sits as well, though, someone like Shia Smith, who is basically a poor man's version of DJ Moore, I think would also see around 60% of the snaps as well. He is someone that scored a touchdown last week. So maybe things are starting to come together for him. DJ Chark is certainly someone that's been lighting it up guys. Okay. And playing 80 five percent of the snaps. Okay. Seven targets last week, six targets the week before that. And it's so painful to be six yards shy of the hundred yard bonus after being two yards shy of a hundred yard bonus the week before that, that was painful. Okay. But he did have 21 DK points. Uh, you know, just was the play that we thought he would be and more. Uh, so I kind of feel the need to go back to him. Although the matchup is going to be more difficult. That should keep his ownership lower. Obviously St. Brown is going to draw more of the defensive attention. Hopefully that leads to a little bit more smooth sailing for DJ Chark. And then lastly, Thornton with the potential that Jacoby Myers could sit and with the potential that Corey, not Corey Davis, uh, Devon, the Parker could sit as well. Thornton could be forced into a big role once again, playing 80% of the snaps last week. And I think that would happen once again, if those two players sit. And the thing with Thornton is they are going to have design plays go his way, especially if someone like Stevenson, Roger Stevenson's out, then I think we'd see Thornton maybe get a few more screens his way and more design plays that go his way, you know, get the ball into your playmaker's hands. They kind of view him as that. So at 3k, I think we could potentially be getting 10 maybe 12 DK points if the injury news kind of breaks that way. And once again, the core plays video, I did this on the first look. Nelson Aguilar, if those two receivers or just if Jacoby Myers is out, is just way too cheap. Okay, going to play 90% of the snaps like he did last week. He's played in over 70% of the snaps with Jacoby Myers off the field, and he's someone that saw 10 targets. Like he'd be forced into a more prominent role. Heck, he'd probably be their number one offensive weapon if you know Stevenson and also Myers are still out. Tight end-wise, we don't really have much. Okay, I feel like there's only three good plays. Schultz, Dulcich, and Chegg. Maybe you go with someone like Tyler Conklin. You could do that. You know, I, I just don't really see that. You know, Dallas Goddard's certainly going to be cheap for his role, like a cheap price point here. 
and he is someone that could easily break the slate coming off the injured reserve. Okay. He's expected to be back. Chicago defense definitely has been much more poor recently. It wouldn't be shocking to see him have a, a good game. And this could be a unique kind of game stack. Maybe pair Hertz and Goddard together and you could be sitting pretty. But that's all I have for you guys for this video. Hopefully you guys enjoyed it. If you did, you know what to do. Give a like and subscribe. That helps me be able to put out more content for you guys. All right. Thanks for watching. As always, let's keep cashing.